Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the procedure for writing an effective procedure. So this is needed for physics classes, but pretty much any science class can use this set of ideas. Primarily though, this is needed because if you're an AP physics student or other science student, oftentimes you're going to need to know how to write an effective procedure. And if students aren't taught this, sometimes they don't know what they're doing and they can spend a lot of time writing a lot of unnecessary things down. And so that's the point here, is to get to the point in a very succinct, in a very clear way, and in a way that's going to be effective. So if you can try to remember an acronym here called OAIM, and we're gonna practice this together. So if you don't remember the entire acronym, at least you'll remember the skills, hopefully. And so let's talk about what OAIM stands for. So like I said, it's an acronym. O is going to stand for the object that we're dealing with. So this is the subject of the sentence, and we'll go in your materials section. The action is the verb. So usually this is going to be like measure, but you do have to have a verb in the sentence, obviously. The instrument is the thing that's going to go in your materials section. So what are you measuring with? And the measurement is the concept that you are measuring. So it could be like length or mass or something like that. And then on top of that, you should throw in something along the lines of the units that are being measured in. So if it's length, you might be measuring in centimeters or meters. If it's mass, you might be measuring in grams or kilograms, that kind of thing. All right, and so let's try an example problem here. Let's say you want to find the density of a cube. So remember, density is going to be mass divided by volume. So let's think about how to do one of these problems using the OAIM method. So if we wanted to write a procedure for the density of a cube, what we could do is we could measure. So we can measure the length, width, and height of the cube in centimeters with a ruler. And secondly, we can measure the mass of the cube with a balance in grams. And if we want to think about what we're doing here, we're going to say our action. I could underline that in red and show you that we're talking about measuring. If we're going to do our instruments in blue, let's say the instrument here is the ruler and the balance. If we want to say what the measurement is. So here we're going to do mass and you could also include grams and on the above you could say the length width and height of the cube and centimeters is what the measurements are measured in you could say and lastly the object the object is here going to be the cube and we have the cube again so as long as you've included those four or five components depending on how you count them in your procedure and talk about what you're going to be doing you should be great with your procedure this is a reasonable procedure right here for measuring the density of the cube notice we're not going to be putting our data table here we are setting up a data table for later though all right let's try another problem together and so this problem says a conservation energy lab where a bouncy ball is dropped and then bounces back to a new height. The goal is to calculate the amount of energy lost. So let's think through this. If you want, pause for a second and think about how you would write out the procedure for this little experiment we're doing. Okay, and so let's take a look at this example here. So I wrote drop a bouncy ball from an initial height of one meter as measured with a meter stick. Have the meter stick attached to a background structure or taped to a wall for reference. Using slow motion from a video clip of the drop, record the fall of the bouncy ball until it hits the ground and bounces back to its new maximum. Measuring the final heights with the meter stick and the total time using the camera's frame rate. So. This is how you would go about writing an effective procedure in a short amount of time under time pressure like you would be for an AP physics test or just in general. If you want to write an effective and to the point procedure, this is an example of how you could go about doing it. In any case, I've done lessons on an entire year of physics and most of the ideas for an AP Physics C mechanics course. If you have any questions or comments down below, please let me know and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.